Hey guys, Doug B here. This week we are going to look at the latest firmware available for the Axe FX3. As of today, that would be firmware version 19.02 beta. Now because there were so many changes made for this, I'm breaking it up into two parts. First part, this part will be about the changes made to the FX3. And the second part, which will be next week, will be about the changes made for the FC controllers. Ready to get into it? Let's go. So there were 12 major revisions made to firmware 19.02 beta that affect the FX3. That doesn't include the ones that include the foot controllers. So I had to do two presets with a number of scenes, eight scenes in each one, to cover everything. So let's start off and take a look at the first thing. Number one, updated 59 base guy and 5F8 tweed models to include both drive controls. See? Bright drive and the normal drive. Point number two, added 59 base guy normal, 5F8 tweed normal, and 5F8 tweed jumped amp models. So here we have 59 base guy bright, 59 base guy normal, a 5F8 tweed bright, 5F8 tweed normal, and then the fun one, 5F8 tweed jumped. With this one, both the bright drive and the normal drive are active. In the other ones, like say for the base guy normal, the normal drive works. Bright drive has a little bit of effect, not much. Same thing on the bright amps, the bright drive works, normal drive not so much. But on the jumped, they both work and you get something like this. I like that. If we take a look at the types in the output EQ, you can see that JM Pre-1 has been added. This type replicates the active EQ used in the JM P1 preamp. So point number four, added the JM Pre-1 clean, one and two models. Scene six has the JM Pre-1 clean. Scene 7 has the clean 2. Point number 5. Updated JM Pre-1, OD-1, and 2 models. As with the clean 1 and 2 models, the bass, mid, and treble controls now are mapped to the graphic EQ when using authentic tone controls. So if we come here, you can see, for instance, they're all set at zero. Now if I turn up bass, go to 5.42, take a look out here, 5.42 at the output EQ. That's only if you use the authentic. If you use ideal, it doesn't work that way. But this is the sound of the OD1. Now one of the other things that he didn't mention was that bass shift channels were also added for Clean 1, Clean 2, OD1, and OD2. So here's the OD1 bass shift. OD2. And then OD2 bass shift. Point number six, updated default cathode follower values for Matchbox D30. Well, let's see. These are the only cathode parameters that I found. So cathode resistance is now at 59.2% and cathode time is at 15.5 milliseconds. Point number seven, added spread control to dual delay and tape types and delay block. Spread acts as master pan in this case and is modifiable. So, if we go to the delay block, and here's the spread. Width is set at 100%. You can reverse that. And if you set it to zero, 
There's no spread. So let's boost her back up to 100%. Now that's the same thing for the tape types as well. It has the spread. Point number eight. Added assignable third LFO to delay block. There it is right there. I really don't know how to use it yet, but there it is. This LFO can be assigned to level, pan, or spread, and multiplies the corresponding value by the LFO value. I'll take them at their word for it. Point number nine, improved input block gate performance. Point number 10, fixed drive block can crash under rare circumstances when switching between certain models. For instance, from the Black Glass 7K to a diode-based model. So what I did here, scene 7 has the Black Glass 7K. Scene 8 is using the Zen Master with the diode type of BAT41. Now normally that would cause a crash. No more crashes. Number 11. Fixed amp block transformer match control not working properly. Here's this guy. I mean, I don't know what it does. I'll try it, but... But it works. And then the last item is renamed speaker impedance to voice coil resistance to more accurately describe the function of the control. Note that this includes all other parasitic resistances. In other words, speaker cable resistance, output transformer winding resistance, etc. I put together another two minute tune using some of the features from this firmware update. I'll list them on screen. Well, there you have it, guys. Part one of my review of firmware 19.02 beta. And as I said, I'll do part two, which is about the FC controllers next Friday. Oh, one other thing. There's a new USB firmware release, version 1.11. Now, this is not one of those files just for Windows users. This is for all FX3 owners. I'll post a link in the description. 
Now, next Wednesday, we'll be looking at another preset of the week. You don't want to miss that, so go ahead and hit that subscribe button and ring that notification bell. All right, guys, see you then.